this is California Care. I wanted to go through a bit of interaction about local anesthesia. First of all, to start out, we like to use lidocaine 2%. The reason we put lidocaine 2% with 1 to 100,000 epinephrine would be to have vasoconstriction as the anesthetic goes in. If the anesthetic stays in the region that you're applying it for, then the duration of the anesthesia would be long. Any anesthetic without epinephrine or with lot less epinephrine like 1 to 200,000 or 1 to 400,000 would let the anesthetic dissipate from that area faster hence the anesthesia period would be lot less. We're going to start out with two simple ones. Number one is infraorbital. So this infraorbital notch, an infraorbital foramen is literally below the eye, below the socket and you can palpate it outside by moving your finger up and down and sideways. Once you find it, you know where it is. Then inside the mouth, you put your thumb inside and you lift up the soft tissue and you rest your soft tissue lifting on the zygomatic arch, you'll be able to see it directly. And what you do is you put the finger on top of the socket without, of course, putting your finger inside the eyeball area. And then you try to aim with perception into that region. When you get your needle to that height where the infraorbital notch or infraorbital foramen is, you keep on injecting the anesthetic a little bit and you'll feel a little bump. And that's where you inject it. Once you inject that, your canine area and your premolar would be on lump, including the lateral incisor and partly central incisor. The central incisor might not be fully numb because there could be collateral crossover from the other side into the central incisor, but normally you would get this region. Rarely would you need to give this block, infraorbital block, because majority of the time when you give infiltration right close to the apex of the teeth, individual teeth, anteriorly you would get this region. Occasionally you would need to give this block in case there is a huge abscess at the canine lateral or central incisor and the anesthetic is not being effective, then you go to the source and you give it an infraorbital notch and that's where the nerve is coming out so you'll get it at that point. In case you're not able to give it from the inside, you can go from the outside of the mouth. You would palpate the notch or the foramen and with a very short needle, don't aim it towards the eye, come from the side. So in case the patient moves or slips, you don't puncture the eye and you can go into that notch only a millimeter or two and deposit your anesthetic there and you'll be able to get the whole area now. When it comes to mental foramen, you would go in vertically and mental foramen is normally at the second premolar site at the apex of the second premolar, maybe two or three millimeters apical to the apex. It could be between the first premolar, second premolar, or second premolar and the first molar. But nonetheless, it's the second premolar side that's where you're trying to give your mental foramen block. You can also palpate that from the outside. If you put even your finger on your own chin on the side where the premolar is, as you go anterior posteriorly close to the lower border of the mandible, you'll be able to feel where the notch is or where the foramen is and you go vertically into it from top and sometimes you can feel yourself dip into the foramen and you inject your local anesthetic there. Since you're giving it right on the foramen for about an hour or so of procedure, all you need is half the carpule, about one cc or one milliliter of your lidocaine 2%. Now one of the injections that is kind of hard sometimes for people because they cannot visualize is the inferior alveolar nerve block. When you come to the inferior alveolar, have the patient open a little bit, at least this much, so you'll be able to put your needle and the finger inside. And what you're trying to aim for is actually this lingula, this notch. The notch is about a centimeter away from the coronoid notch, and that's where the nerve enters the mandible, and then it gets inside the mandible and comes all the way, comes out, part of it comes out on the mental foramen, and the rest of the nerve goes inside the bone, and it supplies individually your anterior teeth. So when you give the mental block, mental block, you'll get that part of the nerve right here. So the nerve that comes out, you'll be able to get, and the nerve that stays in, coming to the incisors, you'll also be able to get. But here, my pet technique is have the patient open up just a little bit. Here we're using, of course, a model. And the patient opens up a little bit, and you move your finger up and down like this till you feel this notch. This notch, if you think, is about five millimeter above the occlusal plane generally. So what you want to do is you want to hold the notch, hold the mouth open, you take the notch, and I'm going to open it up and disregard that the patient cannot open that much. But you feel the notch and at that level, excuse me, and at that level you would penetrate the needle. 
Once you go with the needle, I'll use this example. I would go and let my needle slide past the lingula. The moment it slides past the lingula, that is where the inferior alveolar nerve is going inside the mandible. So you're barely going to go in this much, which is about a centimeter to centimeter and a half, not more than this much. So you don't need to use a long needle. So you go parallel on the same side, on ipsilateral side, not contralateral side, but ipsilateral side. You can also give it contralaterally, but it's very hard to feel the slide on a contralateral side because the needle would keep on touching. And a lot of time people end up towards the posterior border of the mandible. So what you want to do is you want to go on the same side and you let the needle slide. The moment it slides, and you'll feel that slide onto the bone, the moment it slides, that means I've gone a millimeter or too far, I pull back a little bit and I inject. And that's exactly where the nerve enters the mandible and you should be able to get that very nicely. Occasionally the patient can't open the mouth. So what you do is you give echinose vazirani gall gates. These are two techniques. Echinose is a technique in which you go without having the patient open the mouth. Vazirani or gao gaze is when the patient opens real big. For that, you have to put a large bite block inside the mouth. The mouth stays open like that. And you go from ipsilateral side, from the canine, and you keep on going till you hit, hit the condyle right there, almost. So what I do is I put my finger on a thumb inside the patient's ear, and, and I try to aim with proprioception towards my finger or the thumb and you stay short about five to six millimeter of the condyle. In this case, you would need to use a long needle. So you go from the contralateral side and you go to the depth where you think you're about an inch or two centimeter away from your thumb or the ear canal and you inject right there. You would leave the bite block inside the mouth because as the mouth had opened up, the condyle has pushed the nerve forward and it stays there. Let the anesthetic bathe the nerve very nicely and it stays there and then you should be able to get this vazirani block which is also called gao gates. In akinosi you don't let the patient open the mouth, you take the needle and you bend the needle. So the needle is bent like this and you go exactly at the same coronoid notch from the outside and you face towards the condyle and you go to the same area. These are the cases where the patient cannot open the mouth too much and you end up in the same location which is the anterior portion of the condyle and you get the nerve right there. When you get the nerve right there, in actuality, it would get the whole right side numb, including the lower arch and the upper arch. So these are very good anesthetic techniques. Knowing these, you should be able to get most of the blocks. Now, when it comes to maxilla, you would have nasopalatine. In order to get the nasopalatine region, I would first, most, most likely you're working on the anterior teeth, so I would give the infiltration right here anteriorly uh, at the apex of the teeth. Then when the papilla is numb, I would put my needle into the papilla at this angle, at about 45 degree angle, and I would put my needle inside. The needle would anesthetize the papilla, and I keep giving a little bit of local anesthetic till it starts coming out from the palatal, and it would have numbed this area for me. So that would make it a painless injection. Then I would go directly approach the nasopalatine canal and numb the nasopalatine nerve by injecting straight into it. Greater palatines are normally at first molar region. So I would go ahead and push, uh, definitely apply topical, push this area with a cotton pellet, a Q-tip, ear, earbud or a mirror. And then right next to mirror, using the pressure gate theory, I would penetrate with my needle and give a few drops. I do not like to inject a lot all of a sudden because the increasing volume of the anesthetic would create a lot of pressure and that would give a sensation of pain to the patient. So drop a few drops inside, wait about five or 10 seconds, let those drops work and anesthetize the area, and then inject slowly. Injecting slowly is very important because like I said earlier, it would not uh, open up the gate control theory. It would not cause the pain because of the pressure buildup of volume that you're injecting, but it would slowly numb the patient and the patient won't feel the volume of the anesthetic going inside. Not only that, but when you're injecting it, inadvertently, if you're injecting into a blood vessel, the epinephrine or the vasoconstrictor is not going to go into the system and hopefully not cause palpitations or increase blood pressure, even temporarily. So this is what we want to do. In case you have any other questions, please feel free to let us know, and uh, the number will be on the screen for you. Thank you.